Today, we'll meet a garter snake, one of our neighbors found in the Bay Area. Together, we will draw a picture of her. When you draw a picture of something, you must observe it closely. Observing or observation means to look very carefully. Scientists are always observing and trying to learn from their observations. Scientists draw pictures to help them understand what they are observing and to share their observations with others. Today, we will observe and draw this beautiful garter snake. You can pause the video whenever you need more time. For today's activity, you'll need a piece of paper, a pencil, eraser, and something to color with. Markers, colored pencils, and crayons all work great. Now we're going to draw this beautiful garter snake together. First, we'll carefully observe the snake. I observe that the head is shaped a little bit like a triangle. First, we'll just draw the basic shape of the snake, and then we'll add in the details. I'll start with drawing a triangle. Now, I observe that the shape of the snake's head comes in here. This is near the snake's neck. Now, I'll close the shape. Do you see that bright, beautiful yellow line running all the way down the snake's back? Well, we're gonna pretend we're just drawing that line. We're going to make a kind of a stick figure of the snake. Then we'll fill in the body around it. Take your time, carefully observe the curves in the shape of the snake. Can you see how the shape of the snake changes? Right around here, the shape becomes much narrower or thinner. I'm going to pick a little mark right here on my drawing. This is actually where the snake's body meets its tail. Snakes actually have short tails and long bodies. You can tell where the body meets the tail because the shape gets much thinner. Now we'll go back and draw the snake's shape around the line that we drew. Remember, the shape changes here where the body meets the tail. Now we'll do the other side. Great, now we have the basic shape of our snake. Let's observe the head again and make our snake's head look a little more like the one in the picture. Well, the very front of the snake's face, its nose isn't pointy like this, is it? It's actually pretty flat, with a little curve. You can use your eraser to remove the tip of the triangle that we drew. Also, this, the sides of the snake's head are not quite this pointy, are they? Let's round them out a little. You can erase, or you can just go right over them like I'm doing. And what about right here? What do we observe on the snake's head? That's right, the eyes. A snake's eyes come out a little bit in the shape of the head. And the face comes up a little bit right over the eye. 
but we're not actually drawing eyelids. Go ahead and blink your eyes. Snakes can't do that. Snakes have no eyelids at all. Their eyes are always open. Right here at the front of the snake's face, we'll make two tiny marks. Those are the snake's nostrils. We have nostrils too. We use them for breathing and smelling. But snakes don't use their nostrils for smelling. They use something else. That's right. They use their tongue. The shape of the snake's tongue helps them to know where the thing is that they're smelling. Is it to the snake's right or the snake's left? The fork shape of the tongue helps them know that. Now we'll draw a pupil or a round dark mark in each of the snake's eyes. Looking good. Now, let's observe the color pattern of our snake. That refers to the snake's color and the pattern of the colors. So the first thing that I observe is this bright yellow line going all the way down the snake's body and tail. It starts just at the base of the head. Go ahead and draw that in now. Great, now choose a brown color. If your color doesn't look just like mine, that's okay. Garter snakes come in all different colors. Let's color our snake brown. Great. Now that we have the brown color of the snake, let's observe the pattern. When I say pattern, I'm thinking about the lines of dark blotches that go down the snake's body and tail. So I see two dark blotches on either side of the yellow line and I see that they go all the way down the snake's body in a line on either side like this. They kind of match up with each other. And then I see another line next to them on the outside of the body. It's a little smaller and it goes kind of in between the other blotches. See that? I'm going to continue this pattern all the way down the snake's body and tail. While you have your black color, go ahead and darken the pupil or the dark spot in the middle of the eye. You can darken the nostril. You like? You can put that nice dark face shape. Remember, we're not drawing an eyelids, we're just drawing the shape of the snake's head. We'll also color the snake's tongue. Beautiful. Our garter snake is looking great. Look how well our garter snake stands out on this white background. Snakes and most animals are more comfortable when they have a place to hide. Now, in nature, this garter snake wouldn't be hanging out on a white background. It'd be living in its habitat. Remember, 
habitats include shelter, food, and water. So let's draw a nice habitat around our garter snake. These dark splotches, brown and yellow colors, will help them blend in. I think this garter snake would blend in well in some dry grass. Let's draw some in. You can go right over the body and the tail of the garter snake. They love to hide in grass. Can you see how nicely our garter snake can hide? Let's draw in some more places for our garter snake to hide. How about some sticks? Rocks are nice because they provide a nice warm surface where the sun hits them for a garter snake to lay and warm up. And they also provide nice shady spaces for the garter snake to spend time when it needs to cool off. We're giving our garter snake plenty of places to hide in this environment. Plenty of shelter. What else do habitats need besides shelter? Well, they need water. Water is especially nice for garter snakes because they can use it as a source of shelter also. Garter snakes are great swimmers. They can even hide at the bottom of a water source and use it for shelter. What about food? Garter snakes can eat tadpoles, which are baby frogs. Let's draw some in. Small fish, and where there's water, there are plants. Non plants often live snails and slugs. Garter snakes love to eat these. Now we have a garter snake in its habitat. It has grass, rocks, and sticks to hide for its shelter. Also nice shady spaces. It's got water and food to eat. Looks great.